file I've created in the uh, Facebook group. He already posted it. And I told him I also wanted to do a video a, a video farm as well to to show a little more details of how I'm doing my sketches in Fusion um to create yeah my parts I need. And that's uh, what I want to show you today. And yeah, if you guys want, I can uh, go further and uh, show you more in Fusion. But for today, let's head up to Simple Sketches and export it to the laser software. So first of all, you have to create a new file and save it. See it here, I saved it as basic Fusion tutorial file, there's no, nothing in it yet. Um, to create some new parts, you always should uh, create new components. Name them. It would be good if you name them directly, uh, like the part you want to create. If you don't know it at the beginning, uh, you can leave it like it is and name it afterwards. But yeah, if you have big drawings like me sometimes uh, it gets a little messy if you don't name it in, in the first so yeah I will leave it as component one click OK so now you are working component one if you have multiple components uh, will look a bit different um, I will show that in a couple of minutes but now let's keep on going with this part um, so as you see, there's nothing in it, only the standard um, files. I want to create a new sketch. Let me make a little more space here. So simply you can just start with create a sketch and you have no tool selected, but you can simply start with selecting the tool or just Knowing the shortcuts, you can press C and, uh, for example, get the circle tool. Um, now you have to choose on which axis you want to create it. Um, it doesn't really matter at the end for exporting the DXF file. Um, yeah, I will choose the bottom part, so at the uh, view from the top. Uh, yeah, and now I can start to create my sketch. There's a difference uh, I can show you if you you see the the numbers in the uh, field when I drag the circle. And if I create the circle now, let's say 80 millimeter, there's only the circle, nothing nothing more. But if I want to get a specific measurement, because uh, I measured something and I know what I want, I can type it in, like let's say 23.5, that's the hole I need, and enter, or I can click. Now you can see the measurement uh, is there on the screen and you can always uh, See it, and yeah, if you come back to your project and want to know uh, what did I do there, and oh, okay, it was that that uh, length or whatever diameter of the hole. So basically, you can go forward and uh, stop the sketch now, because you want to see yeah your part. Uh, you, you want to create your first part and want to see how it looks. So now you gotta 
two-dimensional uh, sketch, and you want to create a three-dimensional part, you simply extrude it. You can click that button, extrude, or simply press E. Select the surface you want to extrude, like in many other 3D programs. And just drag it or type in the measurements you want. Because for me, I mainly use 3 millimeter plywood. I will type in 3 millimeters, and I can see it. So let's say I'm done now. Um, I'm able to export the sketch. I will get the DXF file of that sketch. But now you're constructing more detailed versions. So now you go go on and see. Yeah, I need holes on that flat uh, on that surface. Uh, or or you, you you cut it out and yeah you see oh I need more holes or or a rectangle cut out or whatever so you can click that surface and add a new sketch let's say circle again doesn't matter at the moment and you create circles uh, let's say five millimeters. Sorry. And um, now, if you want to get it on each side, you simply can create a new circle if you want to do it manually, or you select the circle, go to sketch, and choose circle the pattern. You have to select the yeah the pattern you want to to re replicate and you need to select a center point. For me, that's why I'm choosing the top view and creating everything around the middle. Um, I'm choosing the middle point because it's, cause it's the easiest way. Um, yeah. Now again, you can use these fields and type in whatever you want. Let's say 8, for example. Now you see he's placing the circles around that middle point and the number you choose evenly without any issues. Just click OK and now you got your point. Um, again I want to extrude that or, or cut that out. I have to click E again, select all the circles and just say I will just type it in, or you can simply uh, drag the arrow. Doesn't matter if you want to cut it out. Doesn't matter if it's if you have one single part. Doesn't matter if you have something underneath it or not. Um, or you just can simply type in three millimeter because I've created a part three millimeter thickness. So now. Uh, uh, now it's cut out, and if I now want to export this sketch, I just can click the surface, create, oh, sorry, create sketch. Now I have these sketch, uh, this sketch uh, as a new file or new sketch view as a new sketch and I don't interrupt my sketches uh, I was creating before. It's important for for later on for yeah if you want to redo some work or so you can go on the uh, sketches you created at first. Um, yeah you can simply click stop sketch and click the export button. It right click on the sketch and hit save as DXF. Just save it wherever you want, doesn't matter, depends on you. Uh, I will overwrite my test DXF file. And that's it. Now, for example, I can open Lightburn. 
just to quickly show you how to import it. Yeah, just hit import. I think most of you people know that because you're using Lightburn. Yeah, imported the file and there's it. I can can uh, move it wherever I want on my cutting area. Also change the cutting settings or engraving, whatever. And yes, it start, feel free. So let's get back to Fusion. Um, just wanted to quickly show you, I've already opened a file of mine. If you have a file you created years ago, it's the same. It doesn't matter where or how the 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 part is angled. Um, same procedure as I've shown you before. Just click on the part or, or the surface you want to create a new uh, or, or you want to cut out later on. Just say I want to want to export this, and I don't don't have a final sketch of it. I just click create a new sketch and say stop sketch. And I have to go to sketches. It's the sketch I've created, and again save it. Let's say test XF2, save, and you can see, simple as it, as it is, imported to sketch. Everything is like in Cinema 4D, without any problems, check that, yeah, these are the corners I made, yeah, now you can start to cut. This is my Z-axis uh, I've created for my Acro laser frame. It's a bit messy, the whole file. Don't look at it. I need to, to get it clean and sort, sort everything out. But basically, yeah, that's for the basic sketch usage. I hope I was able to get you into all the Fusion 360 stuff, simple stuff at the at the beginning for using Fusion 360 for laser cutting. Um, I've talked with, uh, I think, Loki on Discord channel. He told me that Fusion 360 is exporting uh, polygon lines. That's something you should keep in mind. Uh, we tested it with uh, T2 laser and light burn. It works well without any problems. But there might be problems with other laser cutting softwares like LXCAM or laser GRBL. Um, you might need to import it first to a cut software and export it again or import it to uh, I think Inkscape can handle the XF files as well and export it as, again as uh, the G files that should work as well. So yeah let me know if you have any topics I can uh, go on with in Fusion. If you don't have any topics I will come up with new topics and yeah I hope I have informed you well, and yeah, see you on Discord or in the Endurance Laser Group. Stay tuned and enjoy your day. Mm -hmm.